Hello, hello, hello there and welcome back in. This is Peyton 3.0 and this is another episode of The Truth Is. Hi. So right now I'm not really in my usual setting on my bedroom instead because this is definitely like going out to the studio. So if you hear anything in the background, ignore it. All right, except for the dubstep and playing in the background, okay? Because one of my songs. But anyway, we didn't come for the music. We came for the truth. And so today's episode is a... It, it, it's a hot take. It's a hot topic. Um, It's definitely a conversation starter. It's controversial. I like that. So, I'm going to turn the mic down a little bit. Yes. So, today's episode is called Is Segregation a Part of Human Animal Nature? Not something that's taught, not something that is a societal thing. Is segregation actually a part of human animal nature? I want you to think about that for a moment. Okay? So even though supposedly and allegedly segregation has ended, at least in this particular country of America, that is, in other countries that kind of mirror it for over 60 years, in a lot of ways, segregation is actually the same in a lot of degrees it just looks like something different than what segregation looked like back in those 50s and, and beyond and 60s and all that, right? You see this picture here? This is this picture is from the actual segregation days in America when you had a color fountain for, for black people, basically. And of course, you have the white fountain labeled that way for white people. Right. But here's the thing. We're currently in the 2020s. And I honestly, in my I don't know, I don't think it's an opinion, honestly. I will actually call this fact, and I'll tell you why. That we do segregate by nature and not by environmental, what we've been taught in the home, what we've been taught by our communities. We do it in our innate nature. And here's why I say that. Let's go down to, let's take a situation like, for example, there's somebody that you don't click with, there's somebody that you don't quite agree with their views, whatever. And so you proceed to eliminate yourself from being around that person, right? Because you don't agree with that person, you don't want them around you. So you don't think of it, nobody thinks of it this way as segregation, but honestly, it is segregation. Honestly, it is segregation. To a small degree, to a smaller degree, but it is segregation Nonetheless, you can still see it today when you walk down the street, even today when it comes to certain friend groups only being like one color, white, a group of, a group of black people together, a group of Asians together, a group of Latin, Latin Hispanic people together. We, we do this stuff by nature not by environmental factors, 
of being taught, quote unquote, that's that's a facade. That's a myth. Right, because we like to be around people that are like us. We like to be around people or human animals that make us feel comfortable. Right, and a lot of times it's people within our own color group, I guess. I'm still seeing that to this day. You know, we've made a lot of progress um, as a human animal race around the world. We made a lot of progress, right? In the United States, in places like the UK, we've made some progress. But we haven't trumped, we haven't actually overcome what most would consider an issue. Right? And so, whether it's all the guys hanging together, right? Or all the girls or girls versus boys and whatever. And it, even though we don't say it today, we don't say it today because somehow it's not politically correct to say this. It would be a fire starter, especially on social media. It's fine somehow the, to this to have this battle between the boys and the girls, right? Boys and the girls, right? But if you were to say whites against blacks, Hispanic against Asians, Latin Mexicans against blacks, whatever, versus blacks, it would cause a firestorm. But that would be literally like the, the pot calling the kettle black because this may be something that you're outraged about on a superficial level, but your actions show different. As a society of human animals, your actions show different. For a lot of you. And this is nothing to really be ashamed of. This is something not to be um, beating yourself up about. A lot of reasons why the human brain itself, on a subconscious level, not you as the conscious, on a subconscious level, because of how the mechanism in our brain is, you guys will go ahead and study the brain the way that I do. The reason why the brain goes in the process of filtering people out, because I do it myself, I segregate. Right? We all segregate. All of us. Ain't one person on the planet, even a person who's like, I'm, I love everybody, white, black, whatever, why not? Blah, blah. Sorry, sorry, sir, ma'am, or whatever you want to call yourself. You segregate too for different reasons, even if it's not color based, even if it's not um, based on sex or gender, or whatever, or politics, your brain automatically goes to a filtering process to protect itself. It's on automatic, you cannot turn it off. You cannot turn it off. So that's why also I say that segregation is not something that's taught it is in our innate nature as human animals. We go through this whole thing for people who are religious or whatever, who people who are religious, whether you, I don't know whether you're a Christian or whatever it is that you are. There's plenty and handfuls of these um, religions where it talks about not judging. But here's the thing, it goes against the fundamental science of the human brain. The human brain judges Carry it, whether, whether you consciously wanted to or not. That part of your brain, you can't control, it's automatic. 
on it. You can try to teach it on yourself all you want to, but you never can. It's like trying to run away from your sexuality. You cannot turn that off. If you're a man who likes men, you cannot outrun that. Okay, you cannot outrun. There are things that are, you are created with that you cannot outrun, and one that that unites us all, all of us. Number one, as human animals, is the fact that our brains judge on automatic. There is no getting rid of that. There is no taming that. You may not say it out loud, but your brain is on automatic firing shit at you all the time, and it's making judgment. But the, the reason why the brain makes judgments in the first place is to protect itself. So that the body from harm to survive. If it deems you as a threat, it wants you to get, it wants to get away from you as fast as possible. It wants to eliminate you as fast as possible. Whether it's making sure you're over there, making sure you don't come around, making sure, it, or even if it got, if it wants to kill you, that and, and if. The thing is, like I said, we were in a civilized civilization as we are, quote unquote, somewhat. <laughs> okay. Then people would be killing people all the time and there'd be no repercussions for it just because then they, they felt threatened. My ass wouldn't be, my dead ass wouldn't even be here today at 37 years old. Come on. Let's talk about it. Right? Every little thing, so I pull out a gun and kill you for they didn't like. They like your shoes today. You're a threat to them. Boop, they shot your ass dead, and there's no repercussions. They like the way you said the words. They like the slur in your voice. So they caught, they pulled the gun and they shot you. Dead. No repercussions. And that was the way the world actually was. Or, I mean, there are, just trust me, there are some places on the earth that are like that, that barbaric, that, 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 that kind of savage that exists out there in very few countries, but exist. But not countries like this, though. There are certain laws in place to prevent somebody from just committing murder and getting, and getting away with it without no negative consequences. Right? So we prejudge, not just we prejudge, we, pre we prejudge to protect ourselves. That's the, that's the most innate reason why we do it. Other reasons to judge is just because of the side, the side, the other parts of judging has nothing to do with the innate nature. This is just extra stuff for society reasons of what's cool, what's not, right? whether it's somebody's clothing or not, this has nothing to really do with a threat truly to you with your safety. It's just you want to be judgmental for the fact that this person is outside of what's acceptable. That's, different type, that's a different type of judgment that is taught. Okay? But there's a, there are like at least two distinct judgments that nobody talks about. They just lump them all into one. Right? The, the taught kind of judgment for societal expectations because people are basically sheep. Most people that follow each other, right? Has nothing to do, has nothing to do with the judgment of when your brain actually feels threatened and now I need to take action. Right. Now, is it correct for the brain to feel threatened when there really is no threat in sight on a real note? No, it's not. But that's not something that you want to conscious though as the conscious inside this thing that we call the human body, <laughs> the brain of here that has so many different types of 
um, different functions and things that make it run the way it does. Okay. Amygdala, prefrontal cortex, a simple lobe. Right? Hypothalamus. I can go on. But anyway, the point is they all have a different function. They work as a team up here. But they don't but the thing is the thing with this is that they they always don't agree up here in his head, which causes chaos. And you as the conscious, you, you can't really truly control that. But you are in a state of some kind of control. Really, scientists believe that the reason why we exist as like the conscious part of the brain, whatever this even is, is to help the body survive while the rest of the team of the body does other things to keep the body alive as a team effort. And you have a part to play, but you are not the complete, you are not the control of the whole body. That's a myth. As a conscious, you are not the complete control of the body itself. You are not. You have to know your position in the human body and you have to play it. And that comes through education and curiosity which has already been found by other great human animals that are scientists, right? The man doesn't know his body or the woman or whatever, the person, the animal, human animal doesn't know the body, always be in turmoil with themselves because they're clueless. Right? But see me, I'm at a higher conscious level at this point by uh, speaking to you. That's why I can run my body like a freaking, um, what, I mean, what am I trying to say? I can run this body like a freaking, just master manage, manager, basically. Let's just call it that, right? Because I understand what's going on inside of this body. I became a nerd because it actually benefits me. But I have so many more things to just that one. Right? I am multifaceted, actually, as a human animal at this point at 37 years old. There are so many things that I can do, but there is so much more for me to learn. See, the man that knows that they know a lot of things, but they have a lot more to learn. So they're humbled by that, and they're hungry to learn something every single day that's going to take them to another level of the place and make them change the way that they do things, just tweak it, adapt it, is the man that truly is great. The one that thinks they got, they, they, they don't want to learn nothing more. They know it all. Or they know what they want to know, but it's, it's the man that's doing the, it's, it's the man that's doing the mediocrity and failure. It is, okay? <laughs> you know, tell me if I'm wrong. Trust me, I ain't. All right, thank you so much for being here today. That's really all I had to say on the subject of the fact that segregation is not is not really, not, it's not, it's not really taught, okay? We do it to basically protect ourselves. That's the, that's the basic level. Now the extra stuff is extra stuff added on top of it. It don't need to be there. But the basic innate level of while we segregate we're talking about the basic level of to protect ourselves, basically. We're talking about that basic level of segregation, not the extra stuff about societal bullshit that makes no sense, that it's not a threat in any kind of way. Like becoming the dominant race, <laughs> you know, of the planet. It has nothing to do with the fact that you're frightened of the other races of your own freaking species that's different we're talking about the basic fundament, fundamentals of why we segregate to protect ourselves or we believe 
is protecting against, even though it's false, it might be false. But you can't really shut these things off, it's automatic. You just have to mitigate them as a, as a conscious. And the best way to mitigate life and just your brain is by first of all, learning about it and continuing to learn something every day that's beneficial. Because it'll change with a person every single time. Right? My name's been Peyton 3.0. If you like to please the like button. Share with your friends. And let's have a discussion about this hot button topic in the comment section. Now, for those of you who are into electronic dance music, which is my main actual brand, this thing that I do here is just a one-off thing. Because like I said, I'm more things than one. But when it comes to marketing, you do have to have a focus. Because it's just human psychology. All these social medias are here for just disclaimer. The electronic dance music community, this is what these social medias are for here at the end, okay? If you are not in the dance, electronic dance music community, there are two here for you. This channel right here, like, subscribe, share with your friends, let's comment, okay? And then there's sessionslive.com. What is sessionslive.com, you ask? I'll tell you. Live.com is a platform where it's like YouTube Live. It's like Twitch Live for those of you who are in the EDM community. Um, but basically, it's just from musicians. It came from Pandora during the pandemic when it hit. They had to come with a brand new idea because honestly, Pandora itself was on the decline as more um, streaming platforms like Spotify um, dominated and nobody really wanted to wait to hear a song come around. They could just choose whenever they wanted to, honestly. And YouTube, you know, being a, such a juggernaut, you know, so um, Pandora took a dip. So they came up with this idea they thought was brilliant for musicians to have their own platform just for them. And they, you can, I can clearly see that they, they kind of were changing it and, you know, and they were trying to make it better in this way and taking suggestions, you know, and you can see all that, right. But anyway, you go on there and refresh your favorite song for me to sing for you and I'll do my originals. And of course, we'll just build community, right? Because that's what basic the platform is for. Okay? I call my diehards Zombatrons, Zombatron Nation, or AKA Peytonators. Okay? I will see you in the next. The truth is, bye bye.